Football Arena. If we have another look at it from this angle. More on the near post, coming in behind him, he's Dublin! It's a goal! Dion Dublin has scored! What a recovery, two down, that goal put Villa back on top, and that's his target again tonight. The honeymoon is over for Charlton after a great start, they've lost their way in recent weeks. It's a cause of real concern for Alan Kerbishley, who's got to get them going, or they'll start the new year in trouble. Back in the 40s, they'd get 70-odd thousand in at the Valley. Those days are long gone, but they've done a wonderful job rebuilding this famous old football stadium. Our live Monday night football from the FA Carling Premiership is Charlton Athletic against Aston Villa. They've won more games in the Premiership than anybody else under John Gregory. And they've got the Premiership's top goal scorer in Dion Dublin. And England's newest recruit. Will they? Will they dare risk the three up top again tonight that ripped into Arsenal? If they do, Collie Moore's in. They'll sort the teams out very shortly. Our last game this side of Christmas, and we are hoping for something special. Certainly, they've both got the incentive tonight to perform. And along the way, we'll also be opening up a few of those Christmas crackers that we enjoyed yesterday. But it's a pity there isn't six points available here, <laughs> because they both need three, don't they? You're absolutely right. I mean, it's a massive game, even this early in the season. Villa will definitely want to take something, go back on top, just to remind everyone that they do mean business. And they're a pretty formidable outfit tonight. They've got a pretty strong team out there. For Alan, they've got to stop the slide sooner rather than later. The two games coming up, Villa tonight, Arsenal next up. Tough, tough task, but they must stop it. Four straight defeats, they wouldn't want a fifth. Speaking of the Gunners, they're back it seems, but they had to work hard yesterday to beat a very good Leeds United. Still in there with them. Same three that have been there since early November. Coventry just outside, Charlton lost their last four, 16 points from 17 played. They really do need something tonight. Everton, Wednesday, Tottenham, Derby and Leicester making up the bottom half. Any team making any progress, in fact, in the bottom half for Southampton. The big movers this weekend, Newcastle United up five and Liverpool up three. No change for Wimbledon, West Ham or Arsenal. Leeds and Middlesbrough swap places. United down one, Aston Villa down one at the moment. Chelsea top for the first time this decade. Now they've got there. Interesting team news for Aston Villa, Richard. They stick with the remodelled formation which came back so fantastically well against Arsenal last week from two goals down in the second half. That means three up front and Stan Collymore starts. Charlton make one enforced change. Eddie Yowds is suspended. Carl Tyler comes back. And this is Charlton. Sasha Illich has had a shaky couple of weeks. He had an unsuccessful trial at Villa before arriving at Charlton. Former Villa defender Carl Tyler comes back to replace Yowds. The goals have dried up for Charlton. Andy Hunt has gone six games without a goal. In fact, since he scored two on Monday Night Football at Tottenham. Steve Jones made his first start last week. Clive Mendonca remains on the bench after a run of only one goal in 13 games. And Villa, Michael Oakes is having his longest run in the first team with the continued absence of Mark Bosnich through injury. Looks like a four at the back for Villa with Gareth Barry dropping out tonight. He's rested this evening. Dion Dublin has nine goals in seven games for Villa. Joe Chim has four in four and Stan Collymore starts this evening. That's a formidable artillery to blast away at fragile Charlton this evening. And Sasha Illich is in the firing line. He's been picked for the Yugoslavia squad, born in Australia, but could play for Yugoslavia on Wednesday night in Israel. Although his manager, Alan Kerbishley, says he's unhappy with so many big games coming up. And they've got themselves a big game tonight, Charlton, haven't they? Against the team who, have, we've said, have won more games in the Premiership than anyone else. They've got the Premiership's top man. 
It's enough to frighten the life out of anybody in that sports bar there. I would have thought where they're preparing for this game tonight. Right, we'll start to look back on more of the weekend's goals when we come back. And uh, one next at Old Trafford as Brilliant Borough win there this weekend. Nice as well, isn't it? Oh, which provides for a great view of London as it happens. As the crow flies, the valley is what, that near to Tower Bridge. Not if you're on the roads, it's not. <laughs> Neil Kaffers, our pilot tonight in the airship circling around the valley. And our thanks to Matt Coyd, our cameraman, tucked up there somewhere. It frightens the life out of me just looking at it. <laughs> First meeting for nine seasons, this one, 2-0 to Villa at Selhurst Park, the last time they played. Only 38 games down the years. The last one at the Valley was 28 years ago, March 1970, 1-0 to Charlton. Keith Peacock, the goal scorer, he, of course, is now the assistant manager. Villa's last win, incidentally, at the Valley, well, you've got to go all the way back to 1956 to find that. OK, more of the weekend's games, Andy. Old Trafford now, Manchester United and who have lost their last four. As we've said once or twice tonight, nobody's won more games this season in the Premiership than Aston Villa. And they've got Super Dion, of course. No one's got more goals in the Premiership than Dion Dublin. Now then, Christmas Day Entertainment from Sky Sports. We've got a, a Soccer AM Christmas special at 10 tonight. It's a bit warmer where we are, eh? Just a bit, Sam, just a bit. That will soon warm up, don't you worry about that. Be a full house as well yeah. at the Valley. Although the form guide doesn't make great reading, the last six league games in the Sky Sports form guide and Charlton haven't won in that period of time. You think back a couple of months, Andy, when they last did, they'd settled nicely, hadn't they, at that stage? I just think what's the worrying thing, Richard, for the bottom five in the division is that they are the bottom five in the form guide. And at some time, they've got to strike form. Southampton, Coventry, Blackburn, Forest and Charlton. Well, rearrange them and that's the bottom five. Villa, halfway, two wins, two draws and two defeats from their last six. Leeds, despite the defeat yesterday, still the best form side in the country. Now then, let's get a word with the two men in the spotlight tonight, Alan Kerbishley and John Gregory, speaking with George Gavin. Alan, how important is this game for you this evening? Well, it, it doesn't matter who we're playing tonight and it doesn't matter that we're in front of your cameras. It's a game that we need to pick some points up. Uh, you know, the recent run we've had uh, has been really disappointing for us. So we've got to win. Is confidence low in the dressing room? No, no, it's not low. I think that uh, we're the sort of side that take every game on as it comes along and we know we've let ourselves down recent weeks and uh, no, the confidence is OK. Goals hard to find though, aren't they, at the moment for you? Well, if you look at a side that's struggling, I think uh, the common denominator is uh, you're not scoring and you're letting goals in. And that's what's happened to us over the recent weeks. Whereas early on in the season, we was hardly letting a goal in and, uh, and producing goals ourselves. We'll be working our hardest tonight, that's for sure. John, is it important you go back on top of the Premiership this evening? Yeah, well, it's um, a position that we've been uh, enjoying for about three months now, so obviously we want to get back there as quick as we can. What has it done to spirit in the team to come back against Arsenal the way you did last week? Well, an enormous amount because of uh, the defeat at Chelsea hurt, and um, we obviously had to suffer uh, a very poor display in the first half against Arsenal, but um, we showed a lot of... Uh, British characteristics, I think, in the second half, really wouldn't lay down and uh, we fought extremely hard to get back into the game and uh, it obviously just gives us that little bit more of a lift and uh, it's taken us into a good spirit over the last few days and uh, looking very much forward to, to this match again tonight. See how we underline the fact that they're a British 11 as well, eh? Didn't let that go uh, by, did he? I was just looking at it, uh, it must be an English 11, surely. I mean, more, even more so. I, mean, I, don't, I don't see too many non-English players in that starting <laughs> lineup. Right, more of the weekend's goals and some of the strugglers now. Coventry and Derby County problems. They've lost their last four. Mm. Villa tonight have made their intentions very plain. Different. Can, we'll go down to the tactics table and just because I think since Dion Dublin went to Villa, Richard, that John Gregory's he's tried certain things and he's trying to accommodate them. When Dion first went for his first three games, he kept the back five intact. And what they did, they had Dion, Stan Collymore. And Paul Merson. Mm -hmm. And he sacrificed a midfield player because normally at the beginning of the season that was the, the, the formation, the three midfield players, the two up top, and they went with that and that brought them great success and swept them to the top of the division. He bought Dion. He wanted to play Merson as well, Collingwood. So he did that. Now what happened there I think was I always think that's a little too because these are defenders, these two. 
and they tend to, when they lose the ball, drop back, which meant that I think these two were getting a little exposed. I think they were getting to the back three a little bit too easy. So John then tinkered with it. He changed it. He left out one of the front men and brought a midfield player back in. 2-0 down at half-time at Forest. That was the change he made. They got back into the game, and for the next three games, they went in with that. But always, he's kept a five, as if that's what he wants to do. And they look do. good with a five. It yes, suits they do them, look, it? They do look good with a five, but they look, in, in my opinion, they look good with a five, as long as they've got the three in front of them. Right. I do think when they go in with a five and that, they it can is, get... It is a big gap, they can it, get line it up there. It's not only a big gap here, it's a big gap across the pitch for mid, two midfield players to cope with. Now, maybe John, against Arsenal, has found, has found, in, for certain games, his combination. Because what he's done for the first time at Arsenal, he took off Gareth Barry, he went in with a four, kept his three, and went in with a three up top. And what that gives him is a solid base where you can play a back four. The other lads will know how to play it. It gives him the protection of the three midfield players who are absolutely superb at running up past mm -hmm. defenders. And it also gives him a front three of real potential. I think Joachim will mainly play on the right. He likes playing on the right, and he'll, do, he'll run past him. Stan Collymore, we know he loves to play. Although he's right-footed, in a strange way, Stan does like patrolling the, the left hand. He'll come out here, and he'll either come back on his right and deliver it, or he'll just deliver it with his left foot. So what John has found, maybe, is his perfect combination. But what's he got here? Because how often does three up top here not work? Um, that depends on the service they get from here. I mean, uh, three up top is, is unusual. Three out-and-out -out strikers is very, very unusual. The one thing you don't want them to do is play like that. If right. they do, then you can get exposed wide on either side with no great protection. What they have to do is give some width to the play. One of them has to. So if joachim has got it here, it's then Collymore's job to get in there with Dublin and one of these will join in the attack and vice versa. If Stan's gone down here, Dublin will be central all the time. Joachim will drive into the box and possibly the opposite midfield player will drive in there. Now that's fundamental to right. three up top working. Is it, they have to provide the width in a game, particularly when you don't have the wing backs, as John has done. And I think this is a system. I think you know, he's not discarding the... Uh, He's not discarding the five, I don't think, Richard. But I think there are going to be games like Charlton tonight where he will fancy winning it. And it certainly worked in the second half against oh. Arsenal. They desperately needed something two down there, didn't they? Unbelievable. Two down, gone him in the back four. But you can see what I'm saying here. That's Lee Henry, a midfield player, getting forward. Joachim joining in. They did have good width. Again here, as they lose the ball, it's going to go wide to the right. And who's going to be there? It's Julian Joachim. And he's providing the cross. A midfield player's joining in. Stan and Dion in the, the penalty area have been joined by a midfield player. Now that's fundamental to three up top winning, as the width has to come from them. And I just wonder if, maybe because it was forced upon him, but he's 2 0 down, that John might have found a system that suits Villa very well indeed. It'll be interesting. It's it Charlton be. Athletic against Aston Villa on the Monday Night Football. Our match commentators, as usual, on a Monday, Trevor Francis and Alan Parry. Good evening. The New Look Valley is full to its 20,000 capacity tonight and looking very smart indeed for just the kind of fixture the Charlton hope and pray they'll still be staging this time next year. But uh, Trevor, you have to say, after four straight defeats, this is surely a match that Charlton can't afford to lose tonight. Yes, I'm sure there are easier matches that they would have chosen tonight after four defeats, but I think that for Alan Kerbishley and for the players, there's little motivation needed tonight. I think often it brings out the best in players when they're playing against the best. And Aston Villa have been top for the first four months of this season. They've slipped the last couple of games, but got the chance to go back tonight. It's a very difficult game for Charlton. Let's take our check on the team news then. Charlton without central defender Eddie Yowds, who's serving a one-match ban. He played in every game before tonight. He's replaced by Carl Tyler, who'd been a regular himself until losing his place when Charlton reverted to a back four. Tyler used to play for Villa, of course, and another former Villa man, Paul Mortimer, is still missing from Charlton's midfield because of an ankle injury. Sean Newton takes his place, and Steve Jones continues in attack in place of leading scorer Clive Mendonca, who's been rested. Yes, for a large part of this season, Alan Kerbisley has played with three at the back. I think the main reason for that has been the absence of Newton and Robinson. As you can see, both of them are now back, fully fit. So it gives Alan the chance to go back to the 4-4-2 formation that served him so well last season. 
One player who featured very highly last season, one of the outstanding strikers in the first division was Clive Mendonca. He lost his place last week at Sheffield Wednesday. He's unable to get back into the team. Alan prefers Jones, who gives him an extra little bit of pace up front. Well, Aston Villa are still missing internationals Paul Merson and Mark Bosnich. In fact, their Aussie goalkeeper is likely to be out for another two months following an operation on his injured shoulder. John Gregory makes one very significant change, as you've heard. Teenage defender Gareth Barry is left out for the first time this season, in fact, in the Premiership. And that accommodates a change in tactics. Villa will play 4-3-3, unleashing on Charlton tonight a three-pronged attack of Dion Dublin, Stan Collymore and Julian Joe Chim. Adventurous move, Trevor. Adventurous and also very brave. The first four months of the season, as I said this now, Aston Villa have been up the top, playing with three at the back. For half an hour against Arsenal, they reverted to a back four with a three up front. They had success. John Gregory has gone with that tonight. But it is an adventurous formation, not just for the front three, Joe Chim, Dublin and Collymore. If you just have a quick glance through that side there, look at the midfield three. Taylor, Hendry and Thompson, they're all very much forward running players. Even the two fullbacks, Watson and Wright, they prefer to get forward. Obviously in a back four, they have to do their fair share of defending. Well, the fans here at the Valley experiencing top-level football for the first time in 42 seasons, long before that youngster was born. But worryingly, for all Charlton fanatics, the team down to 16th in the table, and there's now an ominous little gap opening up, six points between them and the team immediately above them, Everton, and only two points separating Charlton from the dreaded bottom three. I heard Alan Kerbisley talking prior to the game, Alan, about the fact that uh, obviously they'd love to get a victory tonight, but I think quietly he would also settle for a point. Obviously disturbing the fact that he's lost the last four games, he wants to start trying to pick up points. He realises just how difficult it is playing against Aston Villa, their confidence so high. So I think tonight, if he was to put in a good performance and they came away with one point, I think Alan Kerbisley's boys would be reasonably happy with that. A big night for Charlton and their captain and one of their most popular players, Mark Kinsella, who hasn't missed a league game this season. And Gareth Southgate leads the opposition. In shape of the two goalkeepers, Sasa Illich on the right of the picture there, certainly in the spotlight tonight. Recent errors by him have cost goals, but Alan Kirby says, he's still in my side, he deserves a show of loyalty because of what he's achieved before. And that was quite an achievement coming from nowhere to becoming a Premiership regular in, well, just about a year. But the big Australian-born player certainly needs a good performance tonight against the team who rejected him. He had a trial at Aston Villa. They said no. He went on to Villa, uh, to Charlton, rather, and they said yes. Well, it's Sky's first ever live Premiership game from the Valley. And we really couldn't have chosen a better fixture. Charlton desperate to end a run of four successive defeats. Aston Villa poised to return to the top of the table. Live Monday night football from Sky Sports. We're off to the Valley. Match commentators for Charlton against Aston Villa, Trevor Francis and Alan Parry. Thanks, Richard. Welcome back to the Valley. Stan Collymore makes his first start in four matches for Aston Villa tonight, having come on as a substitute in the previous two and come on to great effect in both those matches. Couldn't regain his place in the side after the suspension that followed his sending off against one of his old clubs, Liverpool, earlier in the season and incidentally has only managed one goal in the Premiership in ten appearances this season. John Gregory, well, this time last year he was looking at a place in the bottom six of Division 2 when he was in charge at Wickham Wanderers. Now he finds himself looking at the possibility of going back 
to the top of the pile in the Premiership. Just a point, in fact, would be enough to take Aston Villa there. And uh, Christmas fixtures, they're away to Blackburn Rovers and then at home to Sheffield Wednesday. Second at the start of play, the same points as Chelsea, who have a better goal difference. So we're all set to go here in South East London. Charlton Athletic, 16th in the table, with just 16 points from 17 games and only three wins in the league this season. Four successive defeats and seven matches without a win. Grim statistics for the team in red and white. But as ever, a cracking atmosphere here and a match we're all really looking forward to with this very adventurous looking Villa lineup. Charlton get us underway then. Mills there, England under 21, fullback launching it long to Steve Jones. Robinson with the first shot in anger, but well wide of target. What a start that would have been, Alan. It was good hold up play from Jones. He held off Hugo Hekiog, which is an achievement in itself. Robinson was quick on to it for the shot. John Robinson, the Welsh international. Restored to the side recently, a very, very handy player to have around, equally effective on either side of the field. Header away by Richard Rufus. And then Taylor dispossessed by Hunt. And Robinson overran it this time. Charlton's first season, of course, in the Premiership, and their first time at the top level for eight years. There's the very experienced Chris Powell, who's played in every game for them since he joined in the summer from Derby. Robinson happy to see that go out, it's Charlton's throw. They've taken just three out of the last 21 points, Charlton, their last victory almost two months ago now, when they beat West Ham 4-2 here. Their only two home victories have been very entertaining because they hammered Southampton 5-0 in the early weeks of the season. Charlton were, in fact, top of the table for one glorious week, back in August, but now they're looking at the wrong end. Here's Powell. Red turn. Right heads it clear, the linesman on the far side has flagged, however, offside, Villa's free kick. Justin Villa. Rather like Charlton, made a great start of the season. In fact, they went a club record 12 games without defeat. But Villa have faded in the last couple of months. Four defeats, three draws in their last ten. There's young Hendry. And to Charlton throw. And certainly in those ten games, it's Villa's defensive record which has really uh, deteriorated. They haven't kept the clean sheet in one of those ten matches. Southgate the captain over the head of Stan Collymore but Dublin in behind him keeps it in play oh it's an own goal what a terrible start for Charlton Richard Rufus deflects it into his own goal and Villa in front in the most fortuitous of circumstances well when things are going against you Alan four defeats you don't seem to get much luck and certainly on this occasion here it all goes against Charlton Dublin does well to keep the ball in play. But that's a wicked deflection, completely wrong foot in the keeper, Illich. Has to go down as an OG. Well, the massive irony is that Richard Rufus has never scored a match for Charlton in a match for Charlton here at the Valley. His only two goals have come at Wembley, would you believe, in the playoff final and at Liverpool earlier this season. Not the way he wanted to erase that particular blank. But here they go, with Kinsella in action, trying to recover from that early setback. Newton on the far side. Mills up in support. Of course, very wide there. The cross comes in, and that's easy for Oaks.
Stokes looking for Dublin. And Charlton really have got to try and settle down after such an early blow. The goal coming inside the first three minutes. Southgate touching it back. And they could do absolutely nothing about that, but Dion Dublin's part in the goal, admirable. Missed his attempted header, choked him in behind him. Robinson hooks it clear, and it's not a bad ball either with Jones on the end of it. And he goes down, and that could well be a penalty kick. But the referee, Mr. Steve Dunn, has pointed for a goal kick. Well, that looked a close call from where we're standing. Well, the referee was a good 30 yards behind play, and I think Jones was looking for the penalty. And certainly I've seen those given. He was so far behind the play there, he couldn't really have had a clear view of that. And inside the first five minutes of a game we always expected to be entertaining, we've had a goal. Very strong claim for a penalty, denied. Watson's clearance. And a foul by Stan Collymore. Tyler with the kick. Nodded down again to Jones. The pullback was intended for Newton. Going to get it away. Tyler almost hit that short. He gave Sasser Illich a lot to do there with Collymore bearing down on him. Watson winning it back for Villa. And a very nervous start by the home team. It's amazing, Alan, isn't it, when you're struggling to pick up points, so things go against you. First five minutes, one on goal, one penalty appeal that we've seen given on many occasions. It was very, very close. Some give them, some don't. Certainly on this occasion, it's gone against Charlton. Well, in picking this very adventurous side tonight, John Gregory couldn't have dreamed he would have a start like that, and certainly wouldn't have thought he'd get a goal in that fashion. <laughs> Difficult bounce there for the defenders. Southgate read it well, right under pressure from Newton. Since beating Southampton 5-0 here in August, Charlton have only managed one win in the next six home games. Just nine points out of 21 they've taken at the Valley this season. By comparison, their away form has been uh, quite respectable. They've got to start winning matches. Particularly here at home, challenge there on Redfern seemed uh, worthy of a free kick, but again, Mr. Dunn shook his head. Powell finding Hunt. Robinson takes over. Looking again for Hunt. Jones further ahead of him, and he's in the corner. Big, awkward, willing customer, Steve Jones, and he gave Southgate a difficult ride then. Charlton sent Mills, and also now Carl Tyler forward for the corner. The confusion in the Villa ranks. They've just about got away with it. Julian Jochip beaten in the challenge by Redford. And Newton for Charlton. Tyler is still forward from the earlier corner. There couldn't have been much communication then. Two players, Tyler and Rufus, going for the same ball. There's Mills. And again. Southgate kept very calm then, took it beautifully under control on the chest. Good tackle to win it back, though. Rufus determined to make up for his unfortunate part in the goal. This is right. Tyler won the 
better easily against Julian Jochen. And then Thompson guilty of fouling new free kick to Charlton. And they got on with it quickly. Mills. The clearance was by Watson. Kinsella. Tyler. And the Republic of Ireland man. Takes over again. Robinson. There's a late challenge from Watson. And the referee's reaching for the card. Yeah, it was good play this from Robinson. Just waits for Watson to commit the tackle, just nicks it past him. Watson already committed to the challenge. Gives the free kick away and into the block he goes. Captain. Kinsella will take it, it's a decent one, but in the end, Oakes under no real pressure to come out and catch. The longest run, incidentally, he's ever had in Villa's goal, Michael Oakes. He started the last dozen games and he's likely to be in for the next few as well, with Mark Bosnich out for probably another couple of months because of that shoulder problem. delivers it long, straight onto the head of Mills. Will get the free kick or the throw in, I should say. Collymore back to right. This is Mills. to measure it back to Oaks. Doubling the target here. Over his head to Julian Jochim. The layoff to Hendry. And the shot by Dublin. And Illich had to be smartly down to his left to keep that out. Actually, if you look closely here, Alan, Illich is not a dangerous shot, but he actually slips. His footing, lo he loses his footing. Just watch here, at this moment there, he slips. It becomes a more difficult save than what he anticipated. Thompson with the corner, but too flat. Easily cleared by Newton. A difficult bounce deceived right there. And suddenly Villa from having a corner find the ball back on the edge of their own box. Oaks looking for Collymore this time. Tyler won the header well. Now Robinson. Powell. Hunt in the battle with Watson. Did well. Robinson. And again, Southgate in the right place to clear the danger. Taylor's little chest down. Didn't uh, do his teammate any favours there. He keeps Villa penned back for the moment. Steve Watson. The early ball for Collymore. Rufus headed it clear. Mills feeds Newton. Now Kinsella. Good clearance under pressure by Illich. And the announcement signalled offside against Hunt. The Hunt's last goal live on Monday Night Football against Tottenham six games ago now. In fact, he got both that night in a two-all draw. Collymore with a header on. Charlton have failed to score in their last two games and managed only three goals in the last six. And not only that, they also have one of the worst defensive records in the Premiership. They've conceded 27 goals, well, 28 now, in fact, with that own goal by Rufus that separates the sides. Kinsella to Robinson. Chris Powell on the overlap. Sets it up for Kinsella. Well, that's great play by Dion Dublin. Taylor. Goes down into the challenge from Redford, free kick to Villa. Well, there is 
the definition of a brave man on a night when it is absolutely freezing cold here south of the River Thames he's gone topless Southgate's free kick headed clear by Rufus this is Newton Going away to Thompson now right for Aston Villa Joe Chip Starting dangerous run and it comes through to Dublin and the layoff takes it to Collymore. That was a very brave block there by Chris Powell and a very necessary one. He's certainly right there on it's a tremendous block. Coll Collymore had plenty of time. It all starts with this run from Joe Chin, plays a good little ball into the feet of Hendry. Dublin lays it off. Great block from Powell. But it came about from the run from Jotam on the left-hand side. I think we expected him to play more on the right-hand side, but at this moment, it's Collymore who's operating on the right, Dublin in the centre, and Jotam's playing more on the left-hand side. Southgate's headed clearance, finds Jotam again. It's Collymore. Thompson. Watson. Possession by Villa. Until that moment, anyway. An embarrassing one from Gareth Southgate. The dreaded did it, just as about to strike it with his left foot. Well, it makes a change for Villa to be in the lead. They've had to come from behind in three of their last four games, and they managed to salvage a result each time. Here's Robinson for Charlton, finding Powell, a lot of players in the box, if he can get his cross in here, and he can. And still dangerous, Robinson strikes it. Excellent cross this from Powell. Goes past Lee Hendry, gets to the byline. Good defensive header from Taylor, Robinson, chest control, but second time he's had a shot. But the second occasion, he's failed to trouble the keeper, Oaks. His only goal so far this season in the 5-0 beating of Southampton here in August. It just shows how much domination that uh, Charlton had. There's domination that doesn't win games, it's goals that win games. But apart from the goal, Alan, they've certainly made a reasonable start. Thompson's clearance. Dublin underneath it with Tyler. Just touched it away. Mills under pressure now from Julian Jochip. And that pressure was enough. Julian Jochip has scored four goals in his last four games. Hence the reason why John Gregory felt he couldn't justify leaving him out. And we have all three of those front men in action tonight. Oak clearance. Brought down by Hendry, who was then brought down himself by Redfern, who then made a second splendid challenge, showing the kind of spirit that uh, Charlton are going to need here. Robinson for them. That could be a booking, I would think, for Taylor. And a free kick conceded in a very dangerous place. One or two of the Villa boys, you know, are complaining there. Not about that tackle. For that, Taylor must go in the book, but it all started, you know, from a foul by Redfern on Hendry, which the referee allowed to, to go by. Yeah, there were two really crunching tackles in quick succession by Redfern in the middle of the park. The player who I read this morning has actually committed more fouls than any other uh, outfield player in the Premiership. I don't suppose too many goalkeepers have committed them either, so he's top of that list. See the free kick because uh, certainly in his Barnsley days he hit some belters. That well, wasn't quite one of them. But they have got a corner out of it. Charlton's first and as yet only million pound player Neil Redfern. 
he stays forward for the corner. And it was a free header for Rufus. Right in the end gets it clear. What a great chance that was for Rufus. Yeah. It all comes about, you know, from a corner that was actually yeah. illegal because the ball yeah. was spotted a good, what, foot outside the little arc. But that's a great chance. The marking from the Villa lads there leave a lot to be desired. It was certainly a good opportunity. In time, Jones wins a corner. The third in the last two games, of course, to the leading scorer, Clive Mendonca, Steve Jones. First two matches he started all season. From Salah's corner kick. Rufus is there again, but it doesn't reach him this time. It might do yet. And a strange one there by Tyler, heading it all the way back out to the corner. And still dangerous, Mills executes the overhead kick. Well, not such a good chance as the one that fell to Rufus, but it's still a reasonable chance. A good ball in this from Kinsella, causes a lot of problems. It falls invitingly to Mills. It has to be spectacular. He tries to the overhead kick. Once again, doesn't trouble the keeper. Rufus's header. Mills clearance. Here's right for Aston Villa. Joe Chip. Great pace there against Mills, and a lovely little ball into Henry. Nice turn by him, Henry's still there, now Dion Dublin is there, and the end sets it up, and it's a cracking strike by Taylor, but off target. Well, every time Aston Villa come forward, Adam, they look as if they may score. Joe Chim's a threat here, it falls invitingly to Henry, but just look at the space Collymore gets there, if that ball could have been released to him, he was in yards of space. The shot from Taylor doesn't trouble Illich, but he certainly struck it with great power. Not such good accuracy. Dublin and Joe Chim linking again. Another terrific run by little Julian Joe Chim. Mills was strong, but concedes the corner. Pace off the mark Julian Joe Chim has. Mills is going to have to be on his game tonight to contain him. amongst the uh, big dangers for Charlton from this corner. Tyler dealt with it well. Watson. Yes, yes. Henry sets up the cross, Dublin is there, and it just spilled it. And was very relieved to hear the whistle go. What for? You can see Dion Dublin is saying, and it was difficult to see what for, but a free kick has been given. It's a great ball in from Lee Hendry. Illich, next to come for it, he has to go over the top of Dublin. Well, for me, he drops the ball, gets lucky, doesn't hold it to the second attempt. I was about to say he held it to the second attempt, he dropped it again, but the referee came to his rescue, giving him a free kick. I must say, I would have gone along with Dion Dublin, I couldn't see what on earth he did wrong there. Hasn't done much wrong, has he, since he joined Aston Villa? Nine goals in his seven games so far. Robinson now for Charlton. Still one behind. Chris Powell. Hunt. Good shout for handball. Referee not interested. Charlton had to settle for a throw instead. Powell again. Henry denying him the chance to cross, but Robinson keeps the attack going. And uh, his final delivery and his shooting has been uh, disappointing so far. A game that started dramatically, Trevor, in the space of a few minutes. Two noteworthy incidents. Yes, yeah, certainly this is a contentious issue all the fans there they go up they wanted the penalty mr dunn must have been 25 30 yards behind play he decides it's not a penalty 
Joe Chin. Henry ahead of him. Just struck the youngster, I think, on his heel there. Otherwise, he would have been uh, through. Taylor, back to Ehio. And Jones will keep the pressure on Oakes. A very good clearance. Carl Tyler. Well, I think that was a ridiculous offside decision because Steve Jones quite clearly was deliberately trying to stay out of the play and was facing his own goal. I think you see also he raises his arm, trying to show the linesman that he's not involved at all, he's not interested. The linesman's interested though. Right. Hendry keeps it going to Watson, but not very accurately. Watson's ninth game now since his move from Newcastle. First choice in that right back or right wing back role ahead of Gary Charles, who's one of the Villa subs tonight. who will not let defenders settle for a West Ham player, played for them in the Premiership, third season now at Charlton. He was first choice for long periods last season alongside Mendonca, but uh, lost his place when Andy Hunt was signed in the summer in West Bromwich Albion. Now gets it back because, ironically, it's Mendonca who's been rested. Here's Joe Chip. Mills. Southgate. Straight back to Mills. Well, Alan Kirbishley, the Charlton manager, used to be a player, of course, for Aston Villa back in the mid 80s. He's finding how hard it is now. In this management job, he was made manager of the month in August. Now he sees his side sliding down the Premiership table. Remember, four successive defeats before tonight, and a goal behind here. 18 minutes of the half remaining. Watson. Tyler's clearance, but Charles still under pressure. Joe Chin. On the right where we expected him to start. Thompson. He's looking ball into Dublin. Henry. Right. Oh, Tyler gets it away. Jones. Clearance was by Ethio. Just feel now that the last five minutes, Aston Villa have taken a grip on the game. I think the response in Charlton after conceding that unfortunate goal was good. They had a flurry of attacks, one or two good chances. But for, fortunately for them, the goal didn't materialise. Now it's settled into, into a pattern that you would expect. Aston Villa decide with much more confidence, starting to display the sort of football that's put them at the top of the league. Rufus gets it clear, but only as far as Alan Wright. This is Taylor for Villa. Watson. Henry. Taylor again. Good movement here. On to Thompson. Taylor, they can't get out of their own half at the moment, Charlton. Robinson might be able to do something about that now. Powell hits it long. Watson's there to win it back. Now just getting a little bit frustrated with Charlton's efforts at the moment. It's Kinsella. It's a good-looking ball. Jones committed a foul as he tried to get in behind Gareth Southgate. Yeah, it was rather unnecessary foul because there was a clever ball from Kinsella. He was looking to put it in behind Southgate. Searching for the pace of Jones. No need to foul. Needlessly given away ball there by...
by Carl Tyler. Thompson. Tackle coming in from Rufus. Southgate. Hendry's offside. And ironic cheers from the crowd because the officials finally give them a decision. Look at it, that's one that uh, they shouldn't have had. Well, he's timed his run superbly, hasn't he? It's a feature of Lee Hendry's game, his ability to get forward from that central midfield area. Just wondered today with the line-up, the formation, whether it would restrict his forward running. Normally he's playing there with five midfield players, just a three in there today, but it doesn't stop him from getting forward. If you take that away from him, you take a, a lot of his game away from him. Facing a difficult choice there, he couldn't really go back to his own goalkeeper. Here's Redfern for Charlton. Right clearance, dropped straight to Newton. Well, he's got a lot of pace, but Taylor didn't let him display it then. He's forced him into the corner. Forward again by Redfern. Kinsella's cross. Robinson's done brilliantly there to deceive Watson and slides it in. And how do they not score there? Well, Steve Jones must have felt that the merest of touches would be enough to deflect that in. Well, it was either poor defensive play from Watson or a poor decision from the lines, but let's have a look at it. Well, you can't see quite clearly there, but Robinson never gives it up. Plays in a great ball. It really, they're not going to get much closer than that. Is that out of play? I think that is out of play. The linesman's a long way from it, doesn't get the decision. And that's good defending the far post from right. Just gets his foot there at the exact right moment. Charlton encouraged by that, coming back now. Robinson again. Hunt. Challenge from behind. It's gone forward anyway to Jones. The referee has let play go on. Just delayed that vital second there, Steve Jones. to Rufus Watson wins it back again now Dion Dublin Lee Hendry on it goes to Taylor Thompson good football from Aston Villa right for them Collymore out on the left now Gareth Southgate Watson again Thompson. Right as ever providing the width down that side. Taylor. Right there again, being encouraged to get forward by the Villa bench. It's come square, and in the end they've given it away. Kinsella driving off. Hunt. And still, Robinson. Just let the ball sink under his foot. He's taken the impetus off the attack. It is again, though, Robinson. Should be Oakes's and is. I think you'll probably throw it out of for a throw in Alan because uh, it's Gareth Southgate who's taken a, a knock. Just think the sliding boot there of Steve Jones. Caught him across the shin of the knee, perhaps. Yeah, it all came about through a short pass that was played from Thompson. It rather unnecessarily gave possession away. Well, during this break, let's remind you of our Boxing Day action here on Sky Sports. Intriguing looking match there in the first division in the Midlands. West Bromwich Albion against Port Vale on Sky Sports 2, and the programme begins at 12 noon on Boxing Day. And then later in the day, beginning at 5.30 over on Sky Sports 1, our Premiership action sees Aston Villa again, travelling 
this time to Blackburn Rovers. Southgate, the Villa captain, has gone off, but I'm sure he'll come straight back on again when play resumes. Jim Walker, the physio, just signalling to the referee. And he's OK. He's played in every Premiership match this season, Gareth Southgate. His fourth campaign now with Villa. And what a fantastically consistent figure he's been in that time. Villa, incidentally, already 12 points better off than they were at this stage last season. But by Christmas last year, they've lost eight matches. They've only lost two so far this. fantastic period for John Gregory who was appointed in February and has lost only four of the 28 Premiership matches he's been involved in since 18 victories and six games drawn wonderful record Danny Mills, Steve Jones will chase that all the way. Surely used his hand. A bit confusing as to which one of them is the goalkeeper there. Oh, well, I'll be surprised if he gets away with a yellow card for that because, yeah, I think the referee's right. Most ridiculous way to get yourself cautioned. It was so oh, obvious. It's blatant it? use of the hand. You can't complain about that. Having got possession, he then kicked the ball into the back of the net, so it's given every reason for the referee to book him. And he placed himself in danger, of course, of a red card, so that really was uh, something I'm sure that will anger Alan Curtis Lee. possession for Villa. That's a lovely touch on by Collymore, but no one could profit. Well, that was poor defending from the Charlton lads there. Two players, I think it was Tyler and Powell, both went for the same ball. They were lovely to get away with it. The flick from Collymore almost put Joachim in, in possession. Rufus turns it forward again. Steve Jones. Edburn taking over, but didn't get through the two challenges, Thompson, Joe Chip, Collymore and Dion Dublin in the penalty box. Collymore brought it down beautifully, and then the referee, who's not the most popular man and definitely won't be on the Christmas card list of the Charlton fans at the moment, produced a lovely little header to almost set them up again. Quite inadvertently, I hate to add. Redford, Robinson, Hunt, challenged by Ehiog. Robinson doing well there against Watson. Powell. Seller, uh, Redfern rather. Turn forward by Hunt. Robinson whipped in the ball, but again, too close to Oaks. He's playing a lot of them crosses in blindly. He's getting onto his right foot, he's turning well, but going far too close to the keeper. Poor clearance by Illich, it's gone straight to Thompson, now to Taylor, and on to Wright. Ehio. Powell's clearance, Robinson facing his own goal, brought down by Henry. He's played in every Premiership match since John Gregory took over last season. Robinson. Now a little ball for Powell. 
Joachim soon matched him for pace. Yes, he took one look at Joachim, decided he wasn't going to try and run him. <laughs> Good decision. Robinson. Good turn by Redfern. And no kick for verdict. Dublin on Rufus. Newton on to Hunt. Newton's cross, Steve Jones goes for it, but it was Ehiogu who got there first. Now Robinson. That's a better cross, and it should have produced a goal. Great cross, wasn't it? Wasted absolutely no time at all. Big thank you from Hunt. He appreciates the early ball in, whips it in with his right foot. Yet another free header. You can see Oakes, he's completely beaten. Two foot lower, and that would have been the equaliser. Lack of communication once again there. Two players both going for the same ball. There's Hendry. Dublin. And the youngster in possession again, but Joe Chin just straight offside. Well, surprisingly, although Villa lead, it's Charlton who produced most of the best attacking moments in the game. But how many of those attempts on them would be at goal? Very few, if, not, if any at all. Redfern ends his team of throw-in. Mills can get some distance on his throws, if that's what he chooses to do here. Yeah, big Tyler has gone forward for this throw-in. Immediately gets a response from Dublin. And the smallest man on the field heads it clear. Alan Wright. Mills plays it back in, though. And one of the biggest men on the field. Ehiog got that one away. Henry finding Watson. All that was. Collymore. The challenge, though, by Mills. And it looked as though Collymore fouled him after that. There was an angry reaction from Mills. Trying to keep an eye on that. Southgate finally gets it clear. If you were looking at that incident, and I was looking at Jones and Ekio, because that was another incident off the ball. Leaning eyes in the back of his head at that moment then. His clearance has gone to a Villa player, but Thompson can only head it out. Gets it back again, though. And the presence of Dublin forced Rufus to concede the throw. about when there's a tackle to be made, Danny Mills, and he's a little bit unhappy about one or two challenges that have gone in on him in the last few minutes. Corner given, more so from my vantage point. Looks as though it might have deflected off the Villa man, but uh, corner it is.
fantastic effort that was from Dion Dublin. Great goal line clearance, but an absolutely brilliant effort. Southgate, Joe Chip, and Taylor. We still have about five forward here, Villa. Joe Chin's one of them. Watson, Joe Chin again. This is Thompson. On to right. Thought about the shot for a moment. Goes short instead to Collymore, who then wastes it. But certainly, Villa, who scored in the opening minutes of the half, were close to a second goal in the closing moments then. Yeah, I think it was little Kinsella there who got it off the line. But what an effort this is. Overhead kick, goal all the way. Kinsella does his job, heads it off the line, keeps his side in it. Interesting talking point, those, aren't they? Because if a player raised his boot that high, perhaps in the centre of the field, the referee might well give a free kick against him. But uh, when it happens in the penalty area, it doesn't happen. That's what I mean. Well, that would probably be another booking. Not for the foul, but I think for the set, kicking the ball away. Thompson, guilty player. The uh, present he was looking for because he's 25 tomorrow. But the gift the child were looking for was that needlessly conceded free kick. Can they make something out of it here? And it's Tyler who heads it back into the crowd. And in the end, Dion Dublin got it clear for Aston Villa. Oh, right, missed his kick. Tyler still forward from the earlier free kick. Newton. Headed away by Little Hendry, and there's a chance of a break on here for Villa. Colly Moore in possession, and Ford up alongside him. One of them was Watson, who tried to find, but got the pass all wrong. Yeah, it's a poor ball from Colly Moore. Good run from Watson, but just slightly overhit. Problem for Oaks at the other end, he wisely left it to Ehiog to deal with. He actually, right made the wrong, away. he actually made the wrong judgment, didn't he, Oaks? He's never going to get to that ball, and Ehiog did the right thing. He headed it clear, away from the keeper. Good late rally here by Charlton, but it won't go any further because there's the half-time whistle. A half that started disastrously for Richard Rufus, who could do nothing about the ball that was pulled back from the byline by Dion Dublin as it struck him there and deflected past goalkeeper Sasa Illic. But moments later, Charlton went down the other end and felt that they should have had a penalty for that challenge by Southgate on Jones. They certainly felt so, but he shook his head and said no. And we reach half-time with a scoreline of Charlton Athletic nil, Aston Villa 1. Uh, Christmas entertainment is all sport, of course, and what sport as well. It's international cricket from 8 o'clock in the morning on Boxing Day. The third test between South Africa and the West Indies. And then two live games of football at midday, West Brom and Port Vale. That's on Sky Sports 2. And on 1 at half past 5, it's Blackburn against Aston Villa. And then we return to the cricket to Melbourne for day two of the fourth test between Australia and England. Again, that's on Sky Sports 2. And that's Boxing Day. One goal tonight separates these two, Richard Rufus with the own goal, despite the fact I'm sure that Dion Dublin would like it. You have to feel sorry for Charlton. Seven attempts, they haven't hit the target yet. They'll argue, perhaps, that they should have had a penalty. And they were desperately unlucky with the goal that went in the other end. Four booked already, Watson, Taylor and Thompson from Villa, Jones from Charlton. And they've had a go at them, look, 32% of the possession in Villa's defensive third. And they've had 52% of the possession as well. Five minutes, Andy, that really sum up how things, when they're going for you at the top, do, and when they're going against you, you don't really get anything, do you? No, you're absolutely right, Richard. I really do feel a little bit sorry for Charlton. I think they've showed great spirit since going one down. Um, Villa have looked a threat when they've gone forward, there isn't a doubt about that. I mean, you look at the front three that they've put out there, they're expecting to look a threat, and they've looked incisive. But I have to say that Charlton have, have put them under pressure quite a bit, 
And the only disappointing thing from Alex Kubishio will be that his team haven't hit the target. They haven't made Michael Oakes make a save. And that's the one thing at the end of seven attempts against Villa, when they've created really good opportunities, they haven't really tested the goalkeeper, and that's the one big disappointment for them. And what a way to start as well. Yeah. You're a goal down inside three minutes. It's hard, isn't it? Well, it is hard, and, and, and it's really nothing. I mean, it, it comes from nowhere, Richard, because as the ball goes back to Gareth Southgate, and he's put under pressure, all he's trying to do, I mean, he's not picking out anybody, Gareth. What he's doing is with a sensible ball, and he's just putting it over the top. Now, if you don't deal with it, I've said it many times, and it bounces, you're asking for trouble, but here's a little example to any young players watching about the rewards for not giving it up. Now, as it comes here, you see the centre-half backs away there, and this is just going to bounce. Now, Dublin is just saying, well, I'm going to have a little go at this. There might be something on the end of it, there might not. Joachim's trying to get in from there, drive in. I don't know whether Julian would have got in contact, but this is a hit-and-hope cross. It's drifting harmlessly, I guess, away, and that is a cruel, cruel blow. Own goal. It's an own goal, of course it is. I don't think even Dion will be claiming <laughs> oh, that. Oh, well, much. I was just wondering, watching the celebration there. I think he maybe had half a mind. <laughs> oh, listen, hey. It He's was a good, striker. It's a, he is a striker and he, he will claim it, but I mean, I don't think there's any way that's anything but an own goal. And then, moments later, quite literally, moments later, there's a chance, well, an incident at the other end. Yeah. Charlton thought they got a penalty. Yeah. Wasn't given. Well, I think this could have gone either way. I really, I mean, we'll look at where the referee might have been here. It's actually an attack. Is that the referee? I think he's right there. I'm pretty sure that's him. That's and, and as he breaks, now, I don't care how quick he is, he ain't going to get much closer than the halfway line. So he's given this decision from, say, 40 yards back. Then he goes. Now watch, the, the crucial thing is the left leg. Not now, but of Gareth Southgate. He just takes half a step and then it comes out. As if he's making a tackle, but he very quickly pulls it back away. Now, that might be a little hip roll, it might not. That's why I think... It could have gone either way. If the referee sees the left leg come out like that and he thinks there's contact, he could easily have given a penalty, I think. You split the referees right down the middle. Half would have given it, half wouldn't. I'd have given it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Coventry supporter? That's why. <laughs> and then Dion <laughs> Dublin with a, a terrific bit of skill in the box late on. We've seen these, actually. Andy, think back to Andy mm. Cole at White Hart Lane yeah. a couple of seasons back. Goal disallowed with mm. the foot high. Alan made the point in commentary. I think that it would have been interesting to see what decision would have been made if this had... But there again... Man on the post, back post, it's an advantage. And had they not put him there, I think it's Mark Kinsella. Brilliant skill, but if he's not on the post, Richard, his team are 2-0 down and possibly out the game. Villa lead by a goal to nil, although Charlton, as Andy says, one down, and with the effort they've put in there... We'll Here's Berka. Trying to steer it. Brilliant. Good memories of 98, aren't they? Our Christmas football, incidentally, on Boxing Day from the Football League, it's West Brom against Port Vale on 2 at noon, Blackburn against Villa on Sky Sports 1 at 5.30. Also at 5.30 on Sunday, Dundee United against... Uh, Dundee, rather, against Celtic. I'm sorry, Andy, quickly you corrected. You were about right, to make son? that point, weren't you? I Dundee was. against Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> it's Charlton and Aston Villa tonight. Got a referee change as well. We have. Steve Dunn's gone off and Gary Willard... Is, will be taking his place. Charlton might be happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Steve done with a hamstring injury. Perhaps picked up chasing to try to get up and make that decision on the penalty. Bad warm up. That's all I can see. He wants to get out there and warm himself up a bit more. <laughs> cold weather like that. Uh, and it is cold as well. And I think I briefly, but I think I caught sight of some snow at the valley a little earlier. Ah, that's what we want, isn't it? It's very seasonal. Very nice, that. It's been a long time since we've had a white Christmas. I wonder what the odds are now. Pity you're not down there, actually, as the um, referees change. There's an announcement gone out to the crowd for a fourth official. The search is on. Jimmy Hill wants full fill. Well, I, I, I have to say that we, we have a lad on site down there, Mr John Smart, who 
might well be the fourth official before the night's out. I do think he has uh, some qualifications in the refereeing fraternity. I think you're right. So it may be that we will lose our floor manager at uh, Charlton and he will become the fourth official. <laughs> well, we might not be able to speak to him then. <laughs> Could all get very confusing, couldn't it? But uh, Gary Willard on, Steve Dunn off, and I think that probably is the reason for the, s well, the late start mm. to the second half down there at the Valley. Would I, would I be right in saying that you get the impression Villa have, you now that they're up, Charlton have given them a, a right good scene to in many respects, but are they playing within themselves? I think they probably are. I think having gone on the lead early, I think they've played controlled football, Villa. They've never had to get to the kind of tempo they've reached in the second half against Arsenal yet. And I, and I just wonder, having come from behind in the last four or five games, Villa, now they're in front, at some time might uh, John Gregory say, OK, I'm happy with the result. I'll just take one of the front men off and put on an extra defender mm. again and get back to the old shape and just shut Charlton out. That's the decision that he has to make. More news on the refereeing change. George Gavin. Yes, Richard. Steve Dunn has pulled a hamstring muscle in the first half. He's coming off. Gary Willard, the fourth official, is taking over. No problems there. But they need a fourth official to take over from Gary Willard. And they put an announcement on the PA system looking for a first-class referee in the crowd to come and help out. So at the moment, that's why we're stuck. We're waiting for a referee in the crowd, hopefully, to come and help us out. Thank you, George. I mean, I find the whole thing staggering in many respects. Why do we need the fourth official before we can start the second half? We've got a referee, haven't we? We have, but who's going to then time the game and put up the board at the end that tells us how much Anybody extra time we've got? Anybody down there, for goodness sake. Who's going to pull the managers back out of the technical area? I see, let them get on with it. So do I. Get the game on as well, for goodness sake. <laughs> Ridiculous. 1-0 um, Villa. Richard Rufus with the own goal. That's the one that, uh, as we sit here, puts Villa back on top of the pile. And Charlton facing a fifth consecutive defeat. That would be a difficult pill to swallow for them going into Christmas, wouldn't it? Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, when you think they've got Arsenal coming up fast after this game, and after the way Arsenal performed yesterday, they're going to be a far tougher nut to crack. So it does look very, very difficult for Charlton. But as I've said, right, they've, they've shown great spirit. Great desire, great commitment. They've just lacked a little bit of, of, of craft up front, a little bit of the killer instinct. I mean, the chance we've got here, I don't forget time to have a quick look at it here, but this, and this lad's one of their best options, I think. We've got this lad playing on the left, Robinson, and he has been a threat, and I think they'll be worried about him. And he just played, he's played in a cross for the first time into a really good area, and up he's going to go here. I'm, I don't know whether he's up a touch early, and he, no, he's not, he meets that pretty well, but doesn't quite get it down. But that's typified Charlton. Good build-up, a lot of clever football, but just like the killer touch in front of goal. And we're a long half-time now as well. 15 minutes sometimes can, can seem like an age anyway. But when your team have played that well and you trail, what do you say if you're Alan Kerbishley? Well, you have, to, you have to make them still believe in themselves. You have to convince them that no matter what happens, uh, what has happened in the first half, they have got the ability, you believe they have the ability, to score a goal against Villa. That's what he's got to say. He's got to con continue to drive them forward. There is always that possibility they'll concede another. Because, as I've said before, with Villa's front three and Lee Henry breaking and Thompson, breaking and Taylor breaking mm. they are really really up against it at times defensively. Just thinking back a week or so of course Aston Villa had that delayed half time last week didn't they as a result of that dreadful incident Correct. with the parachutist so that's one lengthy delay. Tonight there's no good reason for this we've got a referee we've got two linesmen why can we not get this on? Well probably because there's some written law uh, at the league at the referees association that says that a game can't proceed without I mean, a fourth official being there, it sounds absolutely ludicrous to me. Um, I don't know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming there's an assessor there, Richard. Now, isn't the assessor well, a fully qualified Well, there usually is, referee? that's right, yeah, that's fair, there usually is. But, you know, I, I don't know, I mean, it's, 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 un, it's unfair to the players because it's a bitterly cold night, I'm just looking back over your shoulder. Most of the players are actually coming out, Richard, to, to have a little pass about with the ball, trying to keep warm. Uh, and that, that's sensible. You don't want to be sitting about in the dressing room if it's cold, so the players have decided to come out and have a little knockabout with the ball, keep their, keep their limbs warm. Which is what George Gavin's trying to do, and he's got more <laughs> news for us, George. Yeah, good news, we have two volunteers for the fourth official, two first-class referees have come forward. They're trying to fit them out with boots at the moment. Goodness knows why, because he won't be coming on the field. But we have a selection I'm hearing now, Neil Perkin, and they find some size 12s for him to wear. So we will be coming on shortly. In fact, Charlton have come out now because they wouldn't wait. They've come out to warm up. We're ahead shortly. Absolute nonsense. 
really is. Get the game on. We have a referee, we have two linesmen, we've got two teams that are desperate to play, as Andy said, on a very cold night, but we've got a delay of, what, some five, six minutes now. Ridiculous. Story of the first half would be what, in summary? Are you getting on your soapbox? I well, like that. That was great. Ludicrous. <laughs> the story of the first half are two incidents for me. One, they go to sleep here and get a little unlucky. In fact, they get a lot unlucky. And it's so typical of, of teams that are struggling Richard and in bad runs and things like that I mean that could go anywhere it could have nicked past the post it, it could have gone in, in the goalkeeper's arms and then another decision that you know sometimes if you're at the top of the table you might just get it going your way simply because that's the way that happens it's a close call he's for the his leg out. and his body in there as yeah, well hasn't it's he? a close call for Steve Dunn to make there isn't a doubt about that Richard but then Villa, the difference in, is in the quality in attacks because Villa have had four shots and Sasa Elic just had to save three of them. <coughs> Sorry, Charlton have had seven attempts and it, Michael Oates has not had to make a save. Come on, take a drink. No, no, all right. But that's, I mean, they, they have looked a threat when Taylor's got forward, when Henry's got forward and they really have tested them but they haven't looked watertight at the back. I mean, again, here we have Robinson. I think he's been an absolute star for them. He's been the threat. And, well, they're so unlucky here. That's a great ball, isn't it? Oh, it's very well defended from Alan Wright. But it's a great ball, and it's saying, go on, put me in. There's a goal on the end of it. But it wasn't to be. And this, another, it's a decent header. It's just not down enough. And that's been the story. They've knocked on the door. They've been close. But then, well, attention to detail. They obviously defend the back post and corners. And it was proved very valuable there. It's kept him in a game. I think at 2-0, this goes in and it's given. Then I think Villa go and win the game. Richard. Usually around this time of the year, we have floodlight failure, isn't it? West Ham <laughs> and uh, I think Selhurst Park last year. Tonight, if you've just joined us and you're wondering why we haven't yet started the second half, we've had a refereeing change. Steve Dunn has picked up a hamstring injury and Gary Willard is on. The problems are beyond that, that they've waited all this time to find a fourth official. So until that fourth official has been kitted out in boots and strip, we cannot start. Charlton are out trying to stay warm. Alan Kirbishley, as we can see, I think a little frustrated already back in the dugout. And uh, as soon as we're ready, we'll let you know. But um, for the time being, let's pause for another of those Christmas crackers. <laughs> Salas. God, was some goal as well, wasn't it? That's the fourth official. I forget now what. Um... Neil Perkins, I Thank think you, Andy. Richard. I wrote it down. Well yeah. done. <laughs> and he wears size 12 boots. <laughs> There's no chance of him falling over there, let's be fair. <laughs> but now we've found him, it seems we can start the game. Dear, oh dear. OK, let's rejoin our match commentators, Trevor Francis. And let's get a word on all this from Alan Parry. Well, there's a file on me at disciplinary uh, headquarters of the FA, so I think my lips should stay sealed on that little incident. But like you, Richard, I'm glad we are finally getting underway with a new referee. I wonder how often they'd be substituted at half-time if supporters up and down the country had their choice. <laughs> Gary Willard it is. Aston Villa it is with a 1-0 lead, getting the second half underway, attacking the goal to our left. Cold night certainly wasn't what the spectators wanted, that enforced delay. Dublin for Aston Villa turns it forward. There have been no changes on the field of play in either team lineup, incidentally. An early throw for Villa. Remember, they got an early goal in the first half. Dublin and Collymore, twin targets perhaps for Watson here. Collymore got the flick on, Dublin was behind him. Kinsella got it clear for Charlton. Incidentally, the last time we 
these two sides met within the old first division nine years ago. Villa won 2-0 that day. It was when Charlton were ground sharing at Selhurst Park. And Villa went on to finish runners-up in the top division that season. Charlton were relegated. They, at least, will be hoping that's not an omen. Hunting possession for Charlton. Kinsella, the captain. This is Robinson. Always a threat in that first half. Hunt. Robinson again. Just got too much on that goal kick. You're right about Robinson the first half, he was the threat, but numerically, Charlton had the advantage, always four against three. So you felt that if they could get it into widest areas, one of the wide players, either Newton or Robinson, would cause problems. Just wondering if there's any adjustment for Master Villa in the second half, whether Lee Hendry would try and play slightly wider. Here's Collymore, that's a good ball, Chochin couldn't control it, it's back to Thompson. He goes down, free kick has been given. Foul by Redford. Very dangerous position this. I wonder if uh, Stan Collymore will fancy a crack here. If it's for a left-footed player, then Thompson's a candidate. By the way, Sasa Illich will have to be on his toes here. sizing up the options and the angles. Collymore hits it, and Illich could only palm it away, but fortunately for him, the in-rushing Elon Dublin couldn't get there. Yes, he certainly hit the target, but he's not the most powerful of shots. I think Illich would have been disappointed if he had not saved that. Steve Jones at the other end, can't feed Robinson down the left. George Gavin, I think he's got another word on the refereeing change. Yeah, just a bit on about uh, the nervous uh, fourth official, Neil Perk, and he's over his nerves now, I think, but uh, he's from Gravesend in Kent. He was here with his son just to watch the game and answered the SOS call. He's a football league linesman, though, so he's got some experience behind him. He wasn't expecting to get the call, but uh, he's down there now and he's sorting himself out with his size 12 boots on. OK, making a note, no doubt, of the various yellow cards and other important things that fourth officials have to do. Either that or signing autographs already. <laughs> signing a new boot contract for those size 12 that have had 10 mentions already. Here's Henry. Watson. Taylor. Henry couldn't find Collymore. Ehiog winning it back. Charlton get the throw. So it seems a long time ago now because of the enforced delay. But the only goal in the game came inside the first three minutes. Richard Rufus, the unfortunate inadvertent scorer. First time he's ever found the net at the Valley. It took him 165 games to score a goal anywhere for Charlton. That came crucially in the playoff final last season against Sunderland at Wembley. Robinson's free kick whipped in. And a clear. Van couldn't make the room for the cross. But has a throw. in and a decent one too. Come back to Newton. County box still packed with players. Robinson. This is Powell. A little up and under there. Hunt knocks it on. Newton. Good pressure here from Charles. Newton's done brilliantly. Unlucky. Well, yet again, brilliant approach there from Charlton, but yet again, they don't test the keeper. That really is outstanding play from Newton. 
goes straight in between the two defenders. He's got to get that on target. Nobody could possibly have come to close him down. He had an absolutely free shot. Well, he just returned to the side recently after missing a couple of months with a bad knee injury, the first serious injury of his career, in fact. Made his debut when he was only 17 and has on and off been a regular ever since. Charlton have, of course, one of the best youth policies in the land. Tyler, a former Villa player, takes the free kick. Steve Jones with a flick on, away by Wright. Tyler there again. Now Rufus. Hunt, it's good control, Newton. Lay off for Robinson. They work hard just to keep it in play, and that's a great ball back in. Kick too deep, although Robinson is there to play it back in, and Oaks has produced a brilliant fingertip save. Well, that's the first save that Oaks has been asked to make in this game. It's a clever bit of play from Robinson, he lobs it to the far post. A good save from Oaks. And he's forced into action again in that melee. Start to the second half, and Jochim has got away for Villa. He's got Thompson up in support, he's unmarked, and he's still there. Great challenge by Powell. Charlton had committed so many men forward, they almost committed suicide. Well, that would have been desperately unlucky for Charlton if they conceded then, because they'd almost equalised at the other end. It's a great goal line clearance from Alan Wright. Gets it off the line, and then at the other end, Jochim. He had the chance to play Thompson in, he delayed the pass, he allowed Powell to get back and let the tackle in. Staring stuff here at the Valley. The home crowd believing their team can rescue something here. Ehiog's clearance. Watson volleys it high. Turned on by Dublin to Collymore. Now Thompson. This is right. A little ball around the outside for Joe Chin, but not too much on it. change is going to be made from the Aston Villa bench. I can only assume that, uh, that Schimmicker there is coming on. My guess is that one of them forwards, I don't know which one, will come off. Who are you taking, Joe Chim or Collymore? I'm just looking momentarily at Southgate, in case he was still suffering from that injury, but you're right, Collymore is the man to be uh, taken off. Coming on in his place, Ricky Schimmicker, who's actually on the transfer list at the moment. He's only made around eight appearances this season. Played over half the matches for Villa in the Premiership last season. And he used to captain the England under-21 team, but uh, the competition for places at centre-back, hot. And he's been the man to sit it out most of the time. So Villa, presumably now, will go back to their more familiar shape. Wright takes the free kick, Dublin with a touch on, and it almost dropped for Joe Chip. Watson's clearance. Powell there for Charlton, he's giving it away to Taylor. It's good pressure in the middle of the field, though, from Radford. 
Newton. Charlton are up for their second half. They're playing some good stuff here. Kinsella. Rufus with a long ball. Hunt's on the end of it. Jones with the shot. Great shout for handball, but that was optimistic. I think it hit the Villa man on the back rather than anything else. Once again, good approach play. Good little knockdown from Hunt. Jones on his left foot. Well, it strikes Ekiod on the elbow, I think it is, but can't get a penalty for that. No. Southgate's free kick. Dublin. Tyler got there first. And another long ball to test Villa. Jones up against Southgate. And the England man did brilliantly, really. Certainly know they're in the game at the moment. He was looking for Tyler. And they put on. Safely gathered by Oaks. by Watson, but he's kept under pressure by the ever-willing Robinson. What do you make of the uh, change in it coming so early in the half, Trevor? Well, I think that John Gregory saw his team coming under immediate pressure at the start of the second half. He realises that he's got the one-goal advantage, and I think he wants to tighten up defensively. Remember, even a draw will be enough to regain the leadership of the uh, Premiership for Aston Villa tonight. Right. Lucas got a bit lucky there, but made the most of it. Redford. Robinson. Now Hunt given away. And a foul by Hunt. Climbing all over Taylor. Charlton got Wimbledon away and then Arsenal here at the Valley as their two immediate Christmas fixtures. Four successive defeats, really desperate to get something out of tonight, Alan Kerbishley. Hunt, put it away. Again, Charlton have it back. Powell. Jones. Held his man off strongly and got the shot in impressively. Well, he's very positive here, he's got the option of playing it into a wide area for Mills. He elects to go alone, gets a strike in. And how many times tonight have we talked about shots coming in? And how many times have we failed to trouble the keeper? Just one save all evening to Oaks. Now are gone. Villa and still lead, but they've been placed under considerable pressure by Charlton in this second half. Jim in the box, Dublin! So agile and athletic here, and Dublin seems to be able to hit them from any angle. It's like a magnet, that ball, isn't it, when you're in form like Dublin is? No matter what type of ball comes in, it always seems to go straight to Dublin. 
He's gone three goals uh, games without a goal before he managed those two against Arsenal. Tyler's clearance right underneath it. Got head tennis in the middle third of the field. Redfern was fouled in the end by Taylor. Robinson. Certainly so Villa being called upon to show their defensive qualities at the moment. Haven't been much attacking themselves yet in this half. Powell opening up the space for the cross, and it's deflected behind for a corner. That was excellent defensive play from Taylor. All that was asked of him was to try and stop that ball from coming in. And he made sure that Pearl wasn't going to get free cross. He got the block in. Poor one play from Taylor. I'm not sure whether Oaks managed to get a fist to that or is it the defender's header, but it's coming back in anyway from Kinsella. And Oaks certainly missed his attempted punch the second time. But a goal kick has been given. The Charlton players are complaining. I thought that Hunt had got the last touch, but uh, let's have a look at this. He did, didn't he? Well, certainly a Charlton player got the last touch. On Boxing Day, we've got football action for you from two divisions. From Division 1, West Bromwich Albion against Port Vale on Sky Sports 2. The programme begins at 12 noon there. And then into the Premiership, Blackburn against Aston Villa on Sky Sports 1. That show starts at 5.30. Day, Villa will be top of the pile again. They need one point from this match to ensure that. There's Thompson. The ball for Joe Chim, giving it away to Rufus. Villa have it back with White. Shimmick. Thompson spreads play to Watson. Taylor, Dublin. Tackle from behind. Altair furious. The referee is the Willard. And free kick nonetheless. And in fact, I think his uh, descent is going to earn Carl Tyler a caution. That's a serious one for him. It's his fifth yellow card of the season. And it means he won't now be available for the crucial game at Southampton in January. back in the side tonight because of the suspended Eddie Yards. That's not what he wanted. Wasted free kick by Villa. Huge punt downfield. It's gone straight from one keeper to the other. Well, that's his second save. Yeah. And the snow continues to fall here in South London. And Charlton continue to fall down the table. Can they rescue something from this game? Dublin has given it away. Kinsella gets it early, looking for Hunt. Touched away by Hugo Ehyog. Powell. Played back to him by Robinson. Henry, a terrific... Uh, Engine just keeps going up and down the field and got back well then to defend. Joe Genoi slipped his man beautifully, great skill. Wonderful run here by Julian Joe Jim. And then a tame ball at the end of it. Kinsella for Charlton. Newton. Mills. This is Redfern. Steve Jones with the downward header. Kinsella, Newton. Well, it's straight against right. Here's Mills again. Well, that final touch on the ball has been disappointing for Charlton tonight. Yeah, on two occasions there, it was not particularly clever play, first of all, from Newton. 
trying to pass the ball actually through Alan Wright and on that occasion there, Mills, I'm not sure quite what he was trying to play. He was looking for a player that uh, just wasn't there. Crowd unhappy that Oakes is taking so long without getting this ball forward. Hendry, Watson. And forward by Thompson. Tyler's miss kicked his clearance. And that's gifted the throw to Villa. from the noise in the background we have an extremely courageous and foolish streaker on such a freezing cold evening well we're not going to give him the pleasure of showing the particularly foul looking body to the nation let's look at something more sensible although i don't th think this fellow's going to agree with it richard rufus with this deflected on goal in the first three minutes set the travelling Villa fans into a very happy mood indeed. Well, after all the disturbing uh, delays we've had already in this second half, this was a little bit of a diversion that we didn't need. And believe me, you're missing nothing, because this gentleman has already stocked up for the Christmas period with his calories. I hope Van Donker's a little bit fitter. He's certainly a lot slimmer, and he's about to join the action by the looks of it. Left out for the first time in his Charlton career for the match at Sheffield Wednesday. Came on as a sub for the last 11 minutes. He's going to get a bit longer this time by the looks of it. The uh, streaker has been removed. It's a bizarre evening we're having. And suddenly there's a chance for Villa to score again here. But uh, as he found himself in a great position, young Lee Henry couldn't get the ball quickly enough under control. Redfern's clearance. Jones has given it away. Ehio looking for Dion Dublin. Powell gets there first. Oh dear, you lucky boy. Illich. He's so bright, isn't he, Dublin? I'm sure many will criticise Illich there, but Dublin, he read his intentions. Let's have a look at this. He should have hit it first time, he should have delayed it, but just watch Dublin. Completely reads his intentions. Lucky Illich to get away with it. claim he was uh, sinned against and now we're about to see the introduction of Charlton's leading goal scorer Clyde Mangonka six goals this season though three of them came back in August when they beat uh, Southampton 5-0 here and the player who's going off Sean Newton hugely popular Mendonca on in his place top scorer in his first season here with 28 goals including a hat-trick in the playoff final against Sunderland. Now, more confusion in the Villa ranks. And they are certainly having the luck of the draw on those uh, little scenarios tonight. And there's a great counter-attack. Joe Chim was in a good position there. That was a very important defensive header by Kinsella. Not only was it a good header, Alan, it must have tracked back all of 50 yards for that interception. Great play from the captain. They are looking particularly assured. Villa have still got that goal lead as we move into the final 20 minutes. Joachim for that. He 
Could fancy going all the way. Oh, that was a terrific effort. Certainly was. It's a confident boy when you prepare to shoot the outside of your right foot, outside the box. He knows he's not going to go between the two of the defenders, Tyler and Rufus, so he just goes with the right foot, outside the foot. He spots Illich as he's six yards off his line, gets it up, can't quite get it down in time. Mills, headed clear by Schimmicker, but only as far as Kinsella. He missed kickback clearance and he was lucky it went to one of his own men. And there's a good ball for Jochim, who uses his pace again to great effect. Well saved the keeper. And again, Tyler this time denied a goal. Taylor can't believe it. And Illich lying injured from his brave interception at the feet of Jochim. Well, his pace was absolutely breathtaking there. It was only the final touch, you know, that lets him down because it actually takes it the ball into the path of Illich. This is the touch now, overplays it, Illich gets the save, but that's another good block, because I think the shot from Taylor is going to find its way into the back of the net. Villa only get a corner, they could so easily have been celebrating a second goal. He certainly made up a lot of ground, you know, Taylor to get to support Jochen, not easy at the pace that he's running, Jochen. save again from Illich well having only just recovered from the injury when he uh, denied a certain goal to Julian Jochim that was quite outstanding work well there's a free header Ekiog on the end of it totally unmarked and that's an excellent save from Illich look at this two of them Dublin and Ekiog both of them unmarked Dublin Ducks allows Echo to get the header in. He thinks he scored. Milic makes a good save. Big shout from the home fans again for a penalty there, but the second referee of the night says no. Here's Thompson. Clever ball out there to Henry. Taylor is in the middle again, and he went for goal himself. Well, since the change that Alan Kirby has made, the Dongo coming on, they've gone with three up, playing 4 3 3. It's been all Villa. They've come forward two or three occasions, almost sealed the game. So I'm convinced that if they've got a second goal, there's no way back for Charlton. Twice denied by that man, Illich. Who is not likely to win his first cap for Yugoslavia. He has Yugoslav parents. He, uh, to join their squad for a friendly in Israel on Wednesday. Dion Dublin. Good ball forward to Hendry. Joe Chim's ahead of him. Comes back to Hendry. Joe Chim. Oh, brilliant skill from Joe Chim. kick already taken. Danny Mills for Charlton. Inside. Goes to go backwards here, Charlton. And when they go forward, Redfern's giving it away as we move into the final quarter of an hour. You get the feeling in the arm that uh, Villa are about to seal this game. They really are hanging on, Charlton at the back. forward, forcing the defender Powell to turn, and he's given it away to Dublin, Hendry, Watson again, and again, this is Thompson, and he can belt them if he gets a side of goal, right, Taylor feeds Watson again, It's good possession from Villa. Thompson forward. Finally, Charlton get it back. And Redfern's giving it away. He was lucky there.
time to consider your uh, man of the match candidate and let us know your verdict on 0660 11223. Well, this is just the kind of difficult match that would be champions would feel they have to win, and Aston Villa are edging towards all three points. They haven't won the league for 17 years now, since the days when Ron Saunders was the manager. And most of their other half a dozen league titles were in the early part of the century. Coaching miles offside here, surely. I think he knew it, even when he hit the ball. And I'll tell you what, the Lions was so late putting his flag up. I immediately looked over when Jochen received it. Just look at this, he's onside. And the linesman doesn't raise his flag. Now it goes up. That's unbelievable. That's a delayed action. And John Gregory, not too happy with that decision. And he's, to entitled, that. he's entitled to be not too happy either. Yeah, when it reached him, he certainly looked miles offside. But when the ball was played, he clearly wasn't. Hmm. Taylor, Thompson, Joe Chip. Well, he's been a threat all through the evening, Julian Joe Chip. in conversation with his assistant Keith Peacock who scored the winner incidentally the last time the teams met here at the Valley that was 28 years ago now played about 600 games for Charlton a legendary figure here and looking at concern as Alan Kirby at this situation as Villa just uh, count the clock down to preserve their lead beyond Dublin Joe Chip This is Powell for Charlton. Can they rescue something late on here? Southgate didn't know where the ball was. And Kinsella's been brought down, and that's given Charlton a free kick in a really dangerous position. He did well once again, Kinsella. As soon as that ball dropped, he backed the play up so quickly. Just look how quickly he gets onto this. He's forced that free kick from Southgate. shooting from these situations. Hunt is the other option perhaps here for Charlton. But it is Redfern who strikes it and the keeper touched it onto the bar. What a moment this is. Great shot from Redfern. But what a save from Oaks. He's looking around, he doesn't know where the ball's gone. It's his night, it's on to the crossbar and over the top. Well, we've seen some outstanding goalkeeping in this second half by both. And another threat and another ball against the bar, this time from Mills. Well, that oldest adage of all in football about how you never seem to get any luck when you're near the bottom of the table. Lopes gets so blocked true. here, I think it's been done through, blocks his path, he can't get to it. But once again, it crashes against the crossbar, this time for Mills. Well, would you believe it? They've hit the bar twice in a matter of seconds. They've had a decent penalty claim turned down. They've conceded an own goal inside three minutes. It would be difficult not to uh, feel a little bit of sympathy for Charlton tonight. But there is no column in the league table about hard luck stories. And if they don't get anything here tonight, the position will continue to look precarious, even though they're obviously playing better than results suggest. Henry almost finding a way through, and Mills slipped as he cleared it. On the increasingly uh, slippery turf now. Thompson.
Kochin. Thompson. This is right. Looks for Hendry. Nice control from Hunt. Mills bodies it forward. Jones was pushed in the back by Southgate, was he? Crowd thought so. Absolutely didn't. Mills with a long ball, and Duncan underneath it. Took two touches, but gets it down to Hunt. This is Redford. Headed away by Echion. Was it Echion or was it Taylor back there defending? May have been Taylor. Whoever it was, it was an important header. Villa clinging on at the moment. As we move into the final eight minutes. Show the favour actually because that ball was played in behind Rufus and Jochim certainly had the legs on him. Another card for Danny Mills. Watson. Henry chasing into the corner with Powell. Steve Watson again. And giving possession away to Rufus this time. Kinsella trapped in a difficult position there. Mills for Charlton. Still chasing an equaliser. Taylor's volley clearance, Tyler underneath it. And again, Tyler winning it back. Rufus has given it away to Wright. Now Thompson. Taylor in the centre. Uh, possession football honed in endless hours on the training ground could stand her in good stead here as the clock ticks on meantime foul by Taylor on Kinsella Kinsella waiting for Tyler amongst others to make their way forward Dunker, wasn't it, on Southgate? Villa's free kick, just what they wanted to relieve the pressure. and loses out to the header and Donker's layoff They're defending strongly and skillfully at the moment Rufus for Charlton and Seller starting point for so many of their attacks into the last five minutes at the Valley Charlton off the back of four successive defeats desperate to rescue something here Villa could go back to the top of the Premiership tonight. Mills. And the deflected clearance keeps Villa under pressure. Watson heads behind. It's a corner. Well, Rufus started this game in dreadful style. Can he finish it? Rather more happily. 
over his head, Tyler in behind him, and it was Dion Dublin back defending and a counter-attack on here for Villa. The ball dispatched first time to Joe Chim, who most unusually was let down by his first touch. Yes, it's a good early ball from Thompson, he released Joe Chim to give him the chance to run it, Powell, one-on-one, -on -one. but once again, the first touch lets Joe Chim down. An easy interception for Powell. Watson. Joe Tim's in there again. Worrying Powell. He made a good clearance in the circumstances. Watson knocks it forward, and again, Joe Tim just failed to get there. Well, certainly no one's left their seats early here as we move into the final three minutes. Capacity crowd of 20,000 in here tonight. With the, with the visitors when the ground record was set at the Valley 60 years ago, by the way, in an FA Cup tie, 75,000. All seated these days, hence the much lower figure. Charlton have a free kick, and a chance to keep the pressure on here. Towering header clear by Ejo. Here's Wright. Thompson. It's a decent looking ball. Hendry trying to sneak in there, but he's very good defending. Did really well there, Kinsella. He's had a marvellous match. And Southgate inadvertently backheaded that. It'll be a corner if it goes. That's why Oakes was so desperate to get there. It's again good goalkeeping, Allen. Gives away a throw in, but prevents a corner. Alert thinking from Oaks. 0660 112233. The number to ring with your man of the match vote. We will have two minutes of stoppage time, so around four minutes remaining here. And then a the scramble, get it away, thanks to Taylor. And the flex off right, I think it just went the wrong side from Charles' point of view. It's a throw rather than a corner, I believe. It might be almost as good as a corner if he can get uh, the usual distance on this throw. Tyler and Rufus, both edge of the six-yard box, but it never reached them. Wright gets it clear. Mills can try again with his foot this time. And once again, there's Dion Dublin back playing his centre-half role. Kinsella hits it! And although Oakes had to push it skywards to take the sting out of it, he was right behind the shot. Yeah, great shot from Kinsella. Gets it under control. Great power, but once again, safe handling. Will be at the second attempt. Into the last minute of normal time. And Charlton would have a fair case for claiming they deserve at least a draw out of this. Watson's clearance. This is Robinson. Nothing, but a free kick nonetheless. This might be one of the few remaining opportunities for Charlton to get level. And Seller will take the kick. Straight into the hands of Oaks. Nervous moments for both sets of supporters and managers now. Stoppage time being played. Alan Kerbishley looking at a possible fifth successive defeat. And they have been so close twice. Smacking the crossbar that time. A save by Oakes. That time even he couldn't get a hand to it. nine games it's looking ominous for them Joe Chin making life awkward again for defenders Ian Dublin beaten to it by Carl Tyler Dion. 
Dublin did well to keep that in play. Jochim, Thompson. Given away to Powell. It could be the final throw of the dice, just about this for Charlton. Mendonca to Robinson. Mendonca's there again, clever little turn. Now Powell, they're queuing up for the cross here. It was knocked away though by Watson. And that was a foul by Joe Chimon Rufus. And this surely will be the last throw of the dice now, because the uh, two minutes of stoppage time are officially just about up. So it's all hands on deck for this Charlton free kick. Powell swings it in there. Wright gets it away. And Seller tries to keep the pressure on. Given away though by Tyler and on the break. This is where Villa can be such a threat with the pace of Joe Chin. Henry one side of him, Thompson the other. Well, they'll be glad just to run the clock down again now. Joe Chip, Thompson again. Villa could be seconds away from a crucial victory here. They've come back so well after their recent disappointments, that magnificent victory over Arsenal, and perhaps a hard-earned win here tonight. They can't quite put the gloss on it yet. But the referee's just had a look at his watch. As Ehiok steps in to win it back and find Hendry. And still no final whistle. Mills. Jones making life awkward again for Villa. Southgate gets it clear and urges his fellow defenders to get forward. Here's Mills. Slung in one more time. Kinsella nods it on. Ahio gets it clear. This is Robinson. Watson forcing him wide. Oh, he's done brilliantly. The cross in the one place, and he didn't want it to drop. But still a chance for Charlton, as Powell swings it in again. Headed down, and Mengonka's there, and there was a great shout for Ham. Ball again from the crowd, and still a problem here for Villa. And finally, they get it clear, but only at the expense of a corner. I don't know where all this extra time's coming from. What a last-ditch tackle that was from Echiog. Because I think Mendonk was on to the end of this. The share for a handball, no ways that handball, but just look at this for a tackle from Echiog. Tyler beaten to the header by Dublin. There won't be time for the corner. There's the final whistle. John Gregory will have a happy Christmas because Aston Villa are back on top of the Premiership. A draw would have been enough. A victory is icing on the cake for them. And they've now lost only twice in 18 league games this season. And they've come back well after a dodgy little period by the high standards he's set himself. You've got to feel for Richard Rufus inside the first three minutes. He was the unlucky man in the wrong place at the wrong time as Dion Dublin just pulled the ball back basically anywhere into the six-yard box, not suspecting for one moment it would end up in the net. Rufus distraught, Dublin delighted, and Charlton tonight had no luck at all. If it's any consolation to them, if they can keep playing like that, you would think that they could get themselves out of this dreadful run they're on. But Aston Villa have shown one of the qualities of a champion side to go away with three points without ever really hitting your peak form. And that is so important. They win by a goal to nil. Our Christmas football takes us to the Hawthorns on Boxing Day. 12 o'clock, Sky Sports 2 for West Brom and Port Vale. On Sky Sports 1 at half past five on Boxing Day, it's Blackburn and Aston Villa, plus all the goals from everywhere else in the Premiership. And on Sunday, again at 5.30, again on Sky Sports 1, it's Dundee against Celtic. 1-0 to Aston Villa. The goal that we've just seen... For
Villa won't mind, but it's a cruel way to lose when you're struggling for something, anything. The own goal from Richard Rufus winning it for Aston Villa. Their top again tonight. 16 attempts from Charlton. They hit the target just four times, though. All of them in the second half. 11 attempts from Villa on target with seven. Good tussle, though. Plenty to talk about. Six booked in the end. Watson, Taylor and Thompson from Villa. Jones, Tyler and Mills from Charlton. And they had a good girt in the first half, Charlton. Had the better of the action areas, as you can see. Across the 96 minutes, nearly 97 that we had, 53% of the possession. Second half, I would have thought, a familiar story. That was. A man of the match. They played with three up front tonight, Aston Villa. Two of the three, got a mention here, Dion Dublin and Julian Jurchim. Sasa Illich polled 11%. For Charlton, but Jurchim's the man of the match, and here he is with Gareth Southgate, and they're both with George Gavin. Gareth, Julian, well played. Gareth, was that the kind of performance you needed and the luck you needed after two minutes as well, an own goal? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, we set our out to be resilient tonight. It's a long time since we've had a clean sheet, and full credit to the lads and, and the goalkeeper, especially, made a couple of great saves. Um, we needed that, and I, I think it's a difficult place to come, and they battled to the end, so full credit to them. Julian, when a striker had to come off in the second half and it wasn't you, did you take that as a vote of confidence in the way you've been playing? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I've said all along I want to play as many games as possible. And, um, you know, it's still the same. And, you know, yeah, it was a vote of confidence. Gareth, you can enjoy your Christmas pudding now, top of the table, can't you? It's nice. I mean, it's, we've given ourselves a base to work from and uh, it's very tight at the top there. But um, I think it, we'd have settled for that at the start of the season. And, you know, the hard work starts now, really. Julian, are you confident about keeping your place at the top of the table? Have you got the quality to hold off teams like Chelsea and Manchester United? Yeah, definitely. You know, we've showed all along this season, and um, you know, Steady, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've been in great form in that, and um, yeah, we've definitely got a chance. Well done to you, Julian, man of the match. Gareth, give that to him, please. Well played, both of you. Thank you. Cheers. Good old tussle, wasn't it? Just like yesterday, really. I enjoyed it. I, I thought second half we saw a, a, a side to to Aston Villa that they're, they're going to have to show, I think, probably a few more times this season because Charlton put them under extreme pressure. They put the ball into the penalty area as much as I've seen a team. And to be fair to Villa, a lot dropped their way. Little half chances didn't go quite for Charlton. But they defended very, very well. But uh, they were up against a very spirited side tonight, mm. Charlton, I have to say. Just sitting there during the break, asking each other, how do you commiserate with Alan Kirbishley after well, that? He's teamed in proud tonight. He's waiting to oh, talk right. to us there. <laughs> Alan, good evening to you. Good evening. Well, what on earth do you say to them? Well, in all fairness, Richard, you know, we've been playing OK in this run, and uh, that perhaps sums it up tonight. You know, we've, we've got nothing from a, another game where, and that's happened to us three or four times in this run. You know, we had Everton here. Who had three attempts, I think, and, and, and got the point. Went up to Blackburn a couple of weeks ago, and you know they had three attempts and scored their goal. And we've been the dominant force, but we haven't got the points. Is it going to be tough for you, Alan, to to keep your players believing that you can get out of this? No, I, you know I think that uh, we lost our way. You know mm -hmm. I'm not bemoaning uh, the luck or anything else, but we lost our way over the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and I think we got a bit of it back tonight. And uh, you know, it was a spirited effort, as you just said, but uh, we was unlucky, I think, and perhaps if we would have got back in it. But the sort of goal we've let in has, has hurt us a couple of times in recent weeks, and if we can eradicate them sort of things, we'll give it a right go. You're not, you're not getting much luck either, Alan, are you? Just after they score the own goal from Richard Rufus, <coughs> there's an appeal at the other end. Now, what did the boys say about that? Did they feel that was a penalty? Well, they felt it was a penalty. Uh, but it's not going for us at the moment, Richard, and, uh, you know, I, I've seen plenty of games and, and perhaps the teams down the bottom can all say that, that it isn't going for them. Uh, you know, obviously your side last week, Coventry, you know, and they've been playing well and not picking points up. I think the point is, is, is that they're not downhearted in there and uh, they know that we've worked so hard to get here and we've worked so hard to stay there as well. But you need a little bit more than that and uh, perhaps we've got to improve in certain areas. I just wonder, Alan, will, will it help you? I know what she was saying earlier that you've got your team tonight, probably for the first time in quite some time, with the, the kind of system you want to play. Now, if you can keep them fit and keep them going, will that help you long term? I, I think so. You know, uh, it, was, it, was, it was against Coventry about six or seven weeks ago that we lost John Robinson and Sean Newton in mm. the same game. And it's the first time really they've been back tonight. Obviously, we made a change near the end there. You know. But the problem we've had, Andy, is that we've always been chasing games. Yeah. You know, to go one down after three minutes, and I'm thinking to myself, well, 
I'm sure Villa are going to create another chance, mm. and if they put it away, this, it, it might be beyond us. But they didn't, and uh, we kept going. But it would be nice to go in the lead for a change. <laughs> Tell us about the delay, Alan, at half time. What on earth was going on down there? Well, I think uh, the referee hurt himself in the first half, and uh, we didn't quite know what the situation was. And, you know, it went on for some time, but I didn't want the boys in the dressing rooms for 20 minutes. It's quite cold out there, mm. and it's quite warm in the dressing rooms. And, we felt if we suddenly went out there after a 20 minute break then someone was going to pull something. So I got the boys out there and uh, waiting for Villa to come out. But uh, in the end, you know, it's one of them things. Well, it's not the best way to go in Christmas, Alan, but um, we, we, we do wish you well, genuinely. Good luck to you. Yeah, well, it's uh, one of these runs that uh, we've not experienced for a couple, you know, for some time, I think. And uh, it's up to us to get ourselves out of it. Well, good luck. And thanks okay. for talking to good us. Good luck, Carl. Thank thanks. Alan Kerbishley at West Ham. And incidentally, the replica shirt winner tonight is Chris Spruels from Grove in Oxfordshire. So well done to you, Chris. Uh, now then, second half, uh, you know, we're talking about the penalty appeal there, which might have made a different game. What about the disallowed goal second half? Yeah, well, Alan talked about how things are not going with them. I mean, in the game, if one thing did go for them, it was this decision, Richard, because when you see it, you'll see that I mean, it is a poor decision from the linesman. Again, this is lovely build-up. Villa got midfield players breaking wide and forward, and they've created big spaces here. And they really work it very well. And Julian Joachim, if you watch him here, he doesn't make any attempt at the moment to sprint into the space. He's holding his position. He's aware that he might run offside. And it's only when Alan Thompson just turns it first time round the corner, you can see he's not offside. Now watch the linesman in the top left-hand corner and watch when his flag goes up. As the ball's just turned around the corner. Whoop, whoop, hold on. There you go. Oh. Now look where Julian Joachim is. And that's the flag just gone up. And it's actually not a difficult one, is it? There's not no, many not. yards between Thompson and Georgium. It isn't. And Georgium and Elitch are faced with each other. And that, that was the little bit of fortune they had. I agree with Alan. They've not had a great deal of luck. But that was the little bit of fortune that kept them going. Has he done enough to stay in, Georgium? In my opinion, tonight? Yes. Oh, by, by my mile. If they only I, play with two at Blackburn. I said before the game, they're at the tactics table. I think they will play with two at Blackburn. I don't think John Gregory will get into the game with, with uh, three up top. And on the performance of tonight, then the one that will miss out will be Stan Collymore. Um, because they looked a better shape side when they came in, they defended better, and yet they still had the genuine threat in Dublin and Georgium, just with the two up front. I said they've got to really work and get mm. you with the three, and that was the one thing Julian Georgium provided at first half. In the nicest sense, he's a pest, isn't he? Oh, without a doubt, he could have had two or three goals tonight, Julian, and yet he's come away with nothing, but he's a real thorn, because he's one of these players that, if you're a defender, you have to know where he is. Because if you lose them and they break, you're dead. Because his pace just burns you off. And he's, he's getting better, maturer, uh, and, and learning as he goes on. And I think it would be bitterly unfair, and he would be bitterly disappointed if after a performance like tonight he was to be left out. Somebody else that we haven't been talking about is the goalkeeper. Maybe after tonight we will be. Well, I know Michael Oakes very well, Richard. I worked with a young lad when I, when I was there as assistant manager, and I always thought he would go on and, and be a top-class keeper. Now, perhaps, you know, John's search for a replacement that should Mark Bosnich uh, get his much publicised move in the summer when he goes, maybe John might not have to look for a number one if this lad produces the kind of saves that he produced here. Now, one of the problems is, I've always said, when you put someone in here, then what you do is you attract players in. And that makes it doubly difficult for the goalkeeper, especially if the ball goes this side. And where they get a little bit of fortune when the, ball, when the ball's played, and they're trying to work it, here we go, where are we? Here we go. And as they play, it's well worked, and it's hit. Now, as it's on its way, now, if the player's here, and if you've put an attack, and if you get a touch on it, and just deflect it, it's a goal. The goalkeeper's committed to the dive, any deflection there, in front of the keeper, and he's absolutely beaten. But he keeps his eye on it, Michael Oakes. It's a great strong Fantastic hand save. because anything weak and flimsy, anything weak and flimsy, and that goes in, Richard. He can't it again. see it either till late, can he? No, it? he sees it now. But look at the strong wrist. Brilliant save. Absolutely brilliant. And that's the kind of goalkeeper I think he can go At 25, with. it's a good age to come in, isn't it? It's a great age. It's, 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 it's middle aged for a, an outfield player, it's young for a goalkeeper. The Carling Premiership then, at the end of another busy weekend, the last prior to Christmas. No change in the bottom three, but Forest hit rock bottom this weekend. Forest, Southampton and Blackburn reading up. 16 points apiece for Coventry and Charlton now. Then it's Everton, Sheffield Wednesday, Tottenham, Derby and Leicester. It's only about five or six down there. You'd look at Andy and say they're in trouble, isn't it? Well, f five are adrift. 
Five are adrift, Richard, and unless one of the ones above them goes into a bad, a bad run, at the moment the five are going to fight it out. 18 games played, 36 points is their total now for Aston Villa. That would be 72 over the next 18 if they kept going like that, which might just give them a realistic chance. And they'll go the close. I told you a few months ago that they would take some shifting. I haven't been proved wrong enough. I'm watching John Gregory over right, your right there. shoulder listening to us. Evening, John. Good evening, Richard. How are you? We're very well, thank you. Are you? Um, I'll be all right in about half an hour, I think, when I get on that <laughs> bus and get on. <laughs> What's wrong, John? Why, you, you, you're not upset, surely. No, I, I, uh, it, was just, it was hard work tonight, Andy, and uh, I was a little bit disappointed in, um, obviously, the way that we played uh, in the first half, uh -huh. and um, we were a bit more like our old self in the last 20 minutes or so, but um, uh, we didn't play very well tonight, but it's, it's all about winning games, really, Andy, and, uh, you know, we've won a game tonight, one goal to nil, possibly didn't deserve to win it over the 90 minutes, but nevertheless, uh, a win's a win. Uh, where I come from, so I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, but surely, John, you, you also must realise if you're going to win the championship, and I, and I assume that's what you want to do, you're going to have to get your team to do what they did in that last 20 minutes with their defensive abilities, that they really stuck at it. And if they do that in a few games, it is a difference between three points and possibly one or nothing. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I picked a side tonight, and, and um, as is my job, uh, uh -huh. sometimes, um, you know, I, I gamble in, in what I do in picking a side, and you know, over the course of a season, I get judged on, on the, the teams that I pick, the substitutions I make, and so on and so forth. And uh, tonight, maybe I didn't start with the right side. Um, we didn't play particularly well with that system. Uh, it, it may have worked last week in mm. the second half against Arsenal mm -hmm. uh, when we had nothing to lose. But um, tonight, it didn't really work. And um, obviously, I look at myself in that respect. So why, why did you pick that team then, John? What was your thinking with going in with the three? I like to pick teams on merit in many respects uh, and the way that people perform. Um, I felt that we would be capable of playing that way tonight. Uh -huh. I mean, it, it, it turned out that maybe we weren't, but uh, we got a bit of a streaky goal in the first half <laughs> and then spent uh, really the next 40 minutes or so uh, defending our own goal. But um, obviously when I made the change in the second half, we looked a lot more comfortable with that. And I think the players were a lot more comfortable with it. But, um, uh, you know, I decided to gamble tonight. And uh, when you're in our job, you, you have to make brave decisions sometimes, um, or stupid decisions, whichever <laughs> way you look at it. And um, I, that, that's why I picked that side tonight. And uh, I like to think that when people are playing well, I'll, I'll stand by them and, and continue to play them. Um, so, um, you know, I, I'm pleased with the result. I mean, I'm not particularly happy with the way that we played. But uh, as you well know, when you look back over the course of a season, it's not all about how, how well you, you play and how nice you look. Uh, it's all about winning, winning games. And uh, we've managed to win one again tonight. And now, uh, you know, it's our place to come to. I mean, you've seen that again tonight. They're fighting like hell for their lives, Charlton Athletic. And, um, you know, it's a, a real tough game for us. And I noticed in the, in the match programme that there's one or two other teams that, that have got to come down uh -huh. here to the Valley in the next few weeks. And uh, I can tell you now, they won't get a very easy game. I just wonder, John, halfway through the season almost, is there anything that you feel your team you've got to, to, at the moment needs to add to its game to take you over the next half? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd obviously like to, to see us play... Uh, maybe a bit better football, a bit more controlled football, uh, but we don't have the players. I no. mean, we, we have a we have a team that are, uh, are grinders. Um, we work exceptionally hard at our game. Uh, you saw again tonight that we've had to no. we've had to dig in. We've had yeah. to dig in on more than one occasion this season. We don't possess the the, the flair of, of Manchester United, the flair of Chelsea, but. Um, you know, I've been in the job nine months now. I think uh, Alex Ferguson's been in it about 12 years. He's had a bit of a start on me. Yeah. Does it get tougher, John? I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I say, you say you're playing them on merit. Uh, would it be fair to say you're picking them because they're big names and, and maybe you're concerned about not playing them? No, you've only got to look at my side over the last couple of weeks. And uh, Stanley Victor had to sit and watch for a couple of games. Um, doesn't matter who you are, you know. Uh, Will he again then, if you go to Blackburn and change well, the system? That, I mean, that depends. Um, depends, obviously, as you know, over the next few days, Rich. But uh, you saw last week um, the, the uh, contribution that Stan made uh, in our victory over Arsenal, and it was outstanding. Uh, and I always stand by players when they when they uh, commit themselves and work as hard as they and as they do for me. And um, I'll always stand by him in that respect. And I felt this was a, a chance tonight maybe to, to take that gamble of playing a 4-3-3 tonight. And, um, you know, coming here to Charlton, I felt it was a game that maybe we could exploit uh, Charlton a little bit at the back. I mean, it didn't work out that way. But uh, I learned a hell of a lot from that tonight. I just, I was thinking, John, but that, that says my measure about yourself that you're learning because we were sitting here five minutes into the second half and Richard said, what would you do? I said, well, I'm not, I'm not a manager. I never have been. But if I was John... 
I'd take one of the front men off and <laughs> stick somebody at the back again. Well, I had a little monitor next to me, Andy. I, must <laughs> have had me I wish that were true, my... son. I wish that were true. <laughs> but no, I mean, uh, that, that's, um, that was something that we, that we were forced to do, really, because yeah. of the way that Charlton were playing. I mean, uh, they, they did exceptionally well against us tonight. Yeah. And uh, uh, I know it's a bit of an old adage, but, you know, if they do continue to play with the commitment and the spirit that they showed tonight, um, they'll be more than a test for many, many teams to come here. We're already the thinking about Boxing Day, John. I'm sure you are making notes here. So everything you've said leads me to suggest it'll be a different system at Blankburn. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll wait and see. <laughs> John, thanks very much indeed. Thank Enjoy very Christmas. Much. Thanks, Thank you. And you. Cheers. Cheers. Bye, Keep it going. So, uh, different system at Blankburn. Well, I mean, I think that, that I said right before the game, I think John picked the three because he really thought he could get at Charlton, who are on the back of four defeats. He's going to face a different Blackburn side with a new manager. Um, I don't think they've lost the game um, under Kiddo yet. Chat, no, they uh, haven't. Blackburn. So he's going to face a different sort of side. And therefore, for me, I think he'll start with his back five intact, with his three midfield players. And I'm going to gamble and say he'll start with George and double it up front. <laughs> Final word, he does get some stick, occasionally in here as well, because he is so honest Not and he's very, open, he's very open. But isn't it refreshing <laughs> when you talk to a guy like that and he's prepared to sit and talk? Well, as he says, I think that John's nine months into the game and Alex Ferguson's 12 years. If Gregor's still doing that 12 years down the line, yes, we'll see that. And will <laughs> but we it is refreshing. Will we still be here asking the questions? Well, I doubt that, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's for another day. <laughs> Right, Christmas, what have we got? Boxing Day, Midday, Sky Sports 2, it's West Brom and Port Vale from the Hawthorns. Followed at 5.30 by Blackburn and Aston Villa. And in that programme, all the goals from the Premiership on that day. On Sunday at 5.30 on Sky Sports 1, it's Dundee and Celtic. Wolves and Ipswich next Monday at 12.30 on Sky Sports 2. And all the goals from the Premiership next Monday at 8 o'clock. That's a week tonight. Sky Sports 1, all the goals from the games played in the Premiership next Monday at 8 o'clock. Chelsea and Manchester United the following day, Tuesday, December the 29th, 7.30 start. Sky Sports 1 for Chelsea and Manchester United, part two in that sequel. Dundee United play Rangers, Wednesday, December the 30th at 7.30, again on Sky Sports 1. And Motherwell play Kilmarnock on New Year's Day at 2 o'clock, again on one. It's great Christmas and New Year entertainment from Sky Sports. Have a great time. We will see you on Boxing Day. From Andy and myself, it's good night. And Villa, a top again. See you next time.